Now, a word of caution. Uh, because we're torch firing this, we haven't counter enameled the back. So there'll be uh, black bits on this where you've heated it up. You either have to be really careful with this or you need to pickle it. Uh, the pickle shouldn't hurt this flux. But if you get those black bits up here, it'll contaminate your colors. So be really careful with that. So basically we're ready to work on this. We're just going to take a spoon, put a little bit of our enamel in, and then we're going to use distilled water. And your distilled water, if, if you don't know, you can get in the uh, supermarket. So I'm just going to use the back end of my brush and drop a few little drops of water in there. What, what you don't want is to get too much water. Uh, although it's not that big a problem because you can use a paper towel. What we want is just a nice mixture. About like that. Now we're going to just pick up with our brush and gently push it against the side of the close and A wire. Don't go above the wire because uh, you don't you don't want to get this on top of the wire. You'll either have to clean it off or you'll have to stone it back at some point. So just make sure that you can't see the metal underneath. Now another reason I like the yellow pages is it acts like a uh, paper towel. So once you get to the edge it'll actually wick the water away. So you don't want too much water on this. Now, clean your brush really well. Use a completely different spoon for your next color. Uh, if you've contaminated your water, tip it out. Use clean water every time. Uh, if this is slightly bumpy, what you can do is you can go back, use water on your brush and smooth it out. Yeah. So clean everything up, pack the other side. Uh, now I've got the new color mixed. So just push your brush sideways to pick it up and push it right up against the edge of your close and A wire. This one's a little bit wetter. Don't worry. It'll all come good. Ideally you'll have enough on here that you can't see the metal through it. Now at this point, I'll take a toothpick and clean the edge. Good enough. And when I shift it, it should clean out the hole. If, if it doesn't, be sure you clean that hole out a little bit using your toothpick before you start to fire it. If you close that hole up, a standard drill won't drill it. You'll have to use the diamond tip drill. 
So now let this dry. Uh, it'll go a dull frosty color. And then once that's happened, uh, we'll put it on our screen and we'll fire it. Okay, we're back on our screen. And if you're using an LPG torch for this, it's really good because it just blankets the whole thing. The mini torch, you need to basically circle underneath. And I'm not sure whether this is completely dry or not, so what I'm going to do is just gently dry it. And once all of the enamel is a dull, dull color, I'll know it's dry like that. So now I'm just going to circle underneath the disc. Be patient. Okay, we're just at the point where it's just starting to fuse. Underdone. You know, what you don't want is that uh, granulated material. So just keep your eye on it and you can see when it's nice and smooth. Stop at that point. You don't want to overdo it. Uh, if you make it too hot, the edges will start to burn. Now, we have to wait until it's cool to see what color it actually is. Now, this white bit that I put on here is actually red. Uh, it's rare that your enamel powder is the color that once it's fired, uh, it, it's always a different color than the color that you put on. Uh, so we just let this wait and cool. And because the enamel is only halfway up the cloisonne wire, once it's cool, we'll wet pack it again and we'll fire it again. And then we'll trim these edges of the wire back and we'll finish it. So pickle this to get the oxides off the back and then pack this again. Now you can see that this is actually my ruby red and it just looks white, doesn't it? So pack this again. You, you don't actually have to. You could stone it back at this point, but two layers will make sure that you have a nice consistent color. And you can see on the green that it's a little bit blotchy. But by the time we fire it a second time, it should be nice and clean. And the magic thing about enamel is that you can fire it many, many times to get the uh, look you want. So if you don't, if you don't get it, if you're not happy with the way your piece is, you can actually go back and modify it. Yep. So now we'll pack the green, tidy up the edges, clean out the hole, and we'll fire it again. Okay, we're ready for our second firing. Just make sure that the enamel is dry. Normally you'd be doing more than one piece and you would just have you put this on your hot plate uh, on warm. So it's dry and I'm just about 50 mil away circling from underneath 
and you can see that it's completely dry now. Just starting to melt. Fuse, I guess is the right word. Granulated finish. And just there, it's finally smooth. So stop at that point. Now, your metal is always a dull red when the enamel fuses. That's just the temperature it is. If you're using a kiln, that's what you're looking for, the surface of the metal being a dull red and the surface of the enamel being completely smooth. Now I'm quite happy with that. It's really close to the top of the cloisonne. And once this cools, I'll pickle it to get rid of the oxides on the back. I'll stone it and then we'll just put a, uh, we'll heat it up one last time to take the dull finish away from the stoning and make it smooth again. And we'll be finished. Now you don't, you don't have to stone this back. And stoning it is basically uh, sanding it back. Uh, you can just leave it this way if you want. But take your number two cut flat hand file and where the cloisonne wire comes across the end just file it back. It just, just to pretty it up a little bit. And if you mark your enamel, uh, you can just go back and reheat it from underneath. And basically, you're finished. Not a bad little piece. Now, proper enamelists will probably just shake their head at this technique that I've showed you, but it's something that you can do at home quite easily with just a basic torch uh, without a kiln. It would be nice if you were able to counter enamel it and make it really pretty, but this is just an, a simple technique that you can use at home.